G'day everyone, Craig here again, um, and today I am privileged to be sitting down chatting with uh, Arwen Volks, who who wrote a, a book, Rupert's Black Dog, and it's um, it's pretty inspirational, I guess you could say, from where the story came from. So, Arwen, thank you for inspiring. Um, so, yeah, introduce yourself and, and, and a little bit about the book and, and where it came from, I guess. Oh, wow. Um, it came from... <laughs> came from so many places. It came from me living with this, with anxiety and depression for as long as I can remember. And I'm 41 now. So for a long time, um, it came from that. It came from always feeling very passionate about how many young people are ending their lives in this country. And to me, that just seems so it breaks my heart but it just it's so unnecessary and it's so doesn't need to happen and you know it, it's all good to have um phone lines and, and counselors and it's great to have those things but if you're in that really bad space you, you just speaking from my experience you tend to withdraw you go hermit and you, you you're not going to reach out 90 percent of the time so what I wanted to create was basically a tool or a, a story that shared a bit of what I've learned in, in my experience, but also with the idea that it would create that little that little light in the distance that someone sitting in a really dark patch could go, hang on, I can I can see that, I can do these little things and I can get to there and once I get to that point I can ask for help and I can do what I need to do, but it's it's getting to that point that's the tricky part. Yeah, that, that that's absolutely awesome that you're saying stuff like that because I think um, when I set up the the mates page, it was it was around that sort of thing. I mean, we are yeah. really good in New Zealand at asking those "Are you okay?" questions. Um, yeah, but it's that that point where we actually have to stick our hand up and say, no, no, I'm not okay. Yep. And then just yesterday I was, I was listening to the, to, or watching the, the YouTube clip you did um, and read, you'd read through a few of the pages of the book and it's just, it's, you articulate anxiety and depression unbelievably well. Um, and I was, I was listening to it going, wow, that's, that's exactly what I went through. It's just that little, that little inner critic, that little voice, it starts, that little off, dog. It's just a, it starts off as a, a little drip and then it just starts getting bigger and bigger and it turns into this yep. massive, massive tidal wave. And I guess at the end of the day, if we don't get on top of that, that little drip or that, that little that little dog to begin with, it is going to turn yeah. into a massive thing that takes over not just our lives but just absolutely everything and I think it, that's exactly right like there is there's one part in the story where um the black dog is saying all that you'll see is me all that you'll hear is me and and it refers to looking out the window and basically Rupert's whole world will be black and that's effectively what happened and so when I was writing this I was trying to be um very honest and very there's no point me trying to do this if I'm not going to be vulnerable with with my journey. So it needed to be completely scary and hard to write. <laughs> I mean, even even just listening to the the emotion coming out of your voice when you were doing the, the YouTube clip, I was like, wow, this is this is the passion and everything is you're wanting to make a difference, and it's as though it's, it has come from a place where you've lived it and, and things like that, and it's, yeah. and honestly, I, I thank you for doing it, because it is it is something that I guess we need to normalise, I don't know if yes. that's yeah. the right word, and I, we, need to, we need to talk about it, and like, like you say, I mean, suicide is a, is a big issue, 680, 685 yeah. people last year, and I think younger people are doing it, I yeah. guess. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, um, one of the testimonials I have is from a mum up in Auckland and her boy is nine and he'd been talking about ending things, checking out. I can't even imagine at nine, my God, you've still got so much ahead of you. You've seen this much of the world. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How, how can things 
in the world be that bad at nine? It's sort of you're so, you, you're still innocent. You're still yes. You're still yep. And I guess I mean I've got a, a wife and I've got a, a two and a half year old son, and I've that's the reason for why I do what I do and talk about the um, well-being and, and mental health is to try and get in a society where he's going to grow up and he's yep. not going to be afraid to say I'm not okay or he's not going to yep. so there's that stigma which I believe is, is still there unfortunately um, it is it is getting better I guess we are we are talking about it more and more but I guess it's we need to get it to a point where hey um, we it's okay well I don't know if it's okay to be not okay but it's okay to to not feel right but then ask for help at the end of the day absolutely and that's why i think your book is unbelievable because it's it's just listening to it and things like that it, like i said it articulates it so it could help someone that's probably wanting somewhere to look but it also if someone reads it that has never been through it could yep. actually then it'll help them understand a little bit i mean it's, it's everyone goes through it differently but I think yes. just, just reading it and, and, and things like that, you just be going, ah, so that's how this feels. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Because as you say, if you if you haven't really experienced it yourself, it's a really hard thing to imagine because that's where all the comments like, oh, just harden up or yeah. go for a walk and you'll be fine. That's where it comes from, is from the whole just having no idea how all-consuming that that black dog can be and and it's it's funny you say that because my both of my parents-in-law didn't have experience it hasn't been part of their journey and me writing this book has made them kind of step back and go wow <laughs> and has really helped them gain an understanding as well oh 100 percent uh, and that's it and it, it is it's sort of I guess, it, like I said, you, you were trying to normalise it and talk about it yep. more and more. And, and the more we do, the better it gets and things like that. And then it's hopefully yep. opening that door for someone to actually turn around and say, hey, I, I do need help. And I mean, it's heartbreaking to hear nine-year-olds and things like that talking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I think, unfortunately, in our culture and society, at this point, yes, we're talking about it, but there's still a lot of... I'm going to put my my mask on, my optimistic prime face, and no one will know that I'm actually dying inside. <laughs> and and I think we need to. Part of me doing this was me taking off my mask and going, "This is me, what's and all, scary, but this is reality." And and I joke about um, how this book was me trying to create a first aid kit at the top of a hill as opposed to an ambulance at the bottom. <laughs> and that's what we need. We yeah. definitely need that. And I think I've talked to friends and things like that after I hit rock bottom and, and came back the, the other side and they were like, we, we just didn't know. And I was yeah. like, to be honest, if um, I could, probably could have got an Oscar for the, the acting I was doing. Yes. That's yep. all I mean. yep. it, was a, it was a complete facade. It just, yep. You'd step out in the world and or try and step out in the world when you could and, and then you just try and put this brave face on and be that happy, jovial person that you usually yep, are and exactly. you know, no one to pick up on it and they'll be always, oh, you, you, you're doing well I mean, you and things like that. But at, at the end of the day, yeah, it's sort of, I always look back and go, yeah, probably 90% of me coming back to where I am now is from help I got. But yep. one step is that one point in myself going, actually, I need help. I yeah, that, that help, and I think that's where I think your book would, is going to do wonders because people will read it and go, actually, other people have been through this as well. Because I guess when I was in my dark hole, when I had my black yeah. dog sitting on my chest, um, it was, geez, I'm the only one. It's sure, yeah. there's no one yeah. else in the world that this can be. Yeah, that's, yep, that's exactly right. And I think, but my turning point was when John Kerwin came out and said that. He had struggled. I was like, really? He's a childhood hero. <laughs> but John Cohen. How, how does that work? And it, and it, just, <laughs> it just proves that mental health or depression, anxiety, it just doesn't discriminate anyone. Not at all. It, and absolutely. And I think um, it's easy to assume it's only ever going to be people in poverty or that have had traumatic events or whatever. But one of the points I tried to make in the book 
is that everybody has a little black dog or has at least the potential for one. And it, depending on the size, you might not even ever know that it's there. But for some of us, unfortunately, that little black dog gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> but yeah, the point is that everyone has one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that, inner, that inner critic. It's that, yeah. that, 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 and if you allow it to get louder and louder and that black dog to grow, it's sort of... And yeah, and for me, it was um, one of the biggest things is learning to question what it's coming at you with as well. And that learning the difference between listening and hearing. Like you hear everything, you don't have a choice about that, it comes in. But what you choose to then actually listen to, that's your choice, you take that on. So if your black dog is sitting there going, you're crap, you've got nothing to contribute, you're a waste of space, you can either listen to that and keep hearing it, keep taking it in, or you can go actually, no, I made someone smile yesterday, so that's irrelevant. And then you can completely flip how how you're taking in and questioning what that dog is saying to you. Oh yeah, I mean, you do. You, there's the inner critic, but you've also got that that inner cheerleader, I guess. You could yes. Say. Well, yeah. It's just how loud that other voice can get and yeah. run out the put that black dog back in its kennel type thing. It's a sort of yeah. It's, ride around on the black dog in your head and you well, know exactly, it. <laughs> exactly. That's it. And it, it is I mean it, I don't know we, we are I don't know if it's just human nature that we just put ourselves down and things like that and if we build ourselves up or say something good about ourselves we're deemed to be arrogant or or something like that and I think that's uh yeah and I, and I just think well no if you're good at something or if you, you know, just say it how it is you know you don't yeah. don't turn around and go, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not good or whatever. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference in in being proud of yourself and acknowledging the awesome things that you're doing. There's a difference between that and being arrogant. And I think that line, um, when you're crouching into the arrogant space, is when you start seeing other people as lesser than yourself or comparing. And it's like you can't own yourself and your own journey and what you're doing someone else that's their journey that's 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 them it's, oh exactly yeah. and i talk I, I don't know how many times i've put it on the, the mates page it's just controlling the controllables um yeah we can only control ourselves and the thing is if, if there's if someone doesn't like me or if they've got what, what it's it's up to them yeah, it's, absolutely, it's, it's, it's and I, I, I've encountered that a lot, <laughs> a lot. It's been one of my big things is, is do I allow myself to be fully who I am and have the colourful hair and the tattoos and the be that giant five-year-old, or do I sort of rein it in and go, oh, no, I'm a sensible 40-something, I should be wearing, uh, you know, whatever. But the number of random conversations and encounters I have with people because of my hair or different things that have absolutely made my day and made their days better, I wouldn't trade those for the world. And so I figure, take me or leave me as I am. So it is what it's, it is. It's, it's <laughs> thing, you know? I guess, I mean, the, I suspect at time there was a point where you did rein it in. And I mean, oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. How did that, and, and how did that make you feel? Oh, it was horrendous. It was exactly. awful. Exactly. It just didn't yeah. work. It just yeah. was like, it was like um, <laughs> a defective party popper. All the parties <laughs> in the little thing waiting to go, but your string's not working. It's not happening. <laughs> no party. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great way of putting it. But it is. It's, you just have to be yourself. It's, it's one of those. Absolutely. And, and learn to be okay with who you are with the good bits and the the not so good bits and and that's okay we all have those bits and oh, yeah yeah definitely. Either, either work on them or own them and just that yeah <laughs> yeah and i guess i mean perfection there's, there's no such thing oh, you know i have i have one of my big tattoos on my back is a line from a song that says Perfection is no test for me because the best I'll ever be is just like you, a human being. And I think that is just, that line has helped me a lot because as soon as you accept that perfection is a myth, 
and a waste of time, <laughs> the sooner you can just go, actually, okay, I'm okay with doing something that's really, really, really blimmin' awesome, but maybe not perfect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, there's always going to be room to to improve or room to absolutely grow. absolutely and i know like with this book for example i had to make a lot of decisions and compromises it's certainly not the the fantasy version of how i would have liked the book to be but if i'd done that very few people could have afforded to buy it because <laughs> yes. it would have been lots and lots of pages and lots more pretty pictures <laughs> and um and the point of it was to make it accessible so you compromise and yeah <laughs> well, that's it. And I, I guess i mean yep you've got this big hairy audacious goal um i'll step into my x sales talk there but it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's one of these things that You've got these big goals and you have these little bits that you chunk off to get to it. And the, the thing is, yep. yes, in the past, and in, in my past, if I failed a goal, I would have felt like a complete failure. And that's when that yep. big black dog would come running in from his kennel and jump all over me and, and love that sort of thing. But now it's like, well, okay, here's a goal. If I don't achieve it, I can look back and go, what went wrong? Or yeah. is, is that goal for me? Or things yep. like that. And, that's and, and who, says, who says that goal has to have a timeline? Exactly. You know, like if I, if someone had said to me a couple of years ago that I was going to self-publish a book for children about anxiety and depression for kids, I would have laughed at you because how do you do that? <laughs> and yet, you know, it, it, as you say, it's the one of the, I talk about goal setting in the book as well, because I know for me, at the beginning of every year, I have a list of personal goals and business goals. I don't have to know how I'm going to achieve them. But I just put them out there as ideally in a Disneyland world, that's going to happen. <laughs> and then if I find a way to make it happen, awesome. But if I don't, well, I'll pop it on next year's one as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I, I'm, set, I'm a big believer in goal setting, 100%. Yeah. And, and just that was something that I'd lost, I guess, when I, when I yep. hit rock bottom was just that that goal, of having, having something to, to strive towards. It, yep. It could be just getting up for the day. Yeah, well, I having three meals the, um, in the day or something. It's it is one of these things that it, it, they don't have to be these massive hairy ass right. goals. It's just just little things, day by day yep. type thing. The other thing that I'm a really big fan of is lists, <laughs> which sounds hilarious and geek and oh lord, but I have a diary, you know, for an everyday, weekly, blah blah blah. And I write down in my list all the jobs I need to do for that day, just, even if it's just put on a load of washing. Oh, I mean, the same day, I might hang that washing. <laughs> if the heavens shine upon me, I might even fold and put it away in the same day. But <laughs> yeah. but I always, there's always a list. And there's always that satisfaction of I've achieved at least something today. Something today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I do it as well. I sit there yeah. in the morning when I get back from getting out and coming back into the office or something, I'll write down my list and okay, I've got to do this, 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 and this. Yep. And some of them I just write one down and honestly, I'll write it down in five minutes time, I know I'm going to do it, but I'll just... Yeah. <laughs> I have, I've, I've achieved, I have, I have achieved something and, it, and that's the main thing and it is, it's like those yeah. little little goals, I mean, yeah, my goal of Iron Man and stuff like that was massive, but it was just like, okay, I had to pretty much teach myself how to run again because I could barely run between a um, power poles. Uh, yeah. So I was like, there's no way that I could go from here to doing an Iron Man. Zero with, to 100. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have loved to. Zero to here. Yeah, of course. There's yeah. just no way that, that would have, I would have achieved that thing. But yeah. It is, it is, yeah, I'm, I'm a list. I'm a list person. That's one of the <laughs> things. And, and I, think, yeah. I think they can be a real celebration in those moments of I'm achieving nothing. Like I, I've got a young girl as well. She's two and a half. And so my days are often spent walking around behind her, picking up the tornado <laughs> that she is. But I love that she's a tornado. But so it's easy to get to the end of the day and look at your house and go, I've done nothing. But really, you've been doing all day. Yeah. You just can't necessarily see what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Tidy it up three times. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> She's an adventure. And I think 
she was part of the motivation for writing this book as well because it was that whole I know if I'd had this book in my younger years it could have made the world of difference it could have I could have saved years of being not very nice to myself by having the tools already in place and yeah so part of it was writing it for her as well to try and sort of yeah, her yeah. That, the toolbox you know <laughs> yeah no, and I guess I mean I look back to to what I went through hitting rock bottom um being suicidal things like that yeah. and I I don't regret it I there's one thing I do regret and it was the, the day that I was going to end everything but that's another story um yeah. I think that I don't regret anything because it's, it's built me to who I am today and being able to help others and talk about it and things like that. I, I just, yeah. I probably openly talk about it too much. I'll probably make people feel uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, well, I just want to, I, I want to talk about it like we talk about the weather type thing. It's, yeah. it's it should, should be like that. And I guess at the Absolutely. end of the day, if you, if you have a broken arm, broken knee, you go to the doctor. Okay. If you, you've got a broken mind brain whatever you go to the doctor and I, I love the fact that we both of well, both of us we're doing it for our kids um yeah. next generation because i think it's yep we still got that stigma it's starting to break but when these these young ones are starting to grow up i think it's going to that's when we're going to see that change absolutely and you know like i <laughs> in the disney version of my life that number 685 will be zero for you know at some point and that that would be my ultimate goal. <laughs> I know the reality of achieving that is fairly slim, but you know, doesn't mean I'm not going to give it a crack. <laughs> well, to be honest, saving one person's life, I think, is going to be an amazing, amazing feat. And I, I think, I, I know your book will. It'll save Yeah, me. well, I, yeah, based on what I've heard from a few people I already have, and that, um, as you say, if I do nothing else, I'm good. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and that's where I guess you, you embrace the past and the, the stuff that you've been through and go, actually, I'm now able to help. And I'm Absolutely. And I think once you've been through a journey like you and I have, where we yes, that black dog at times has probably been fairly minimal, but other times has been all dominating, all consuming, and you're, you've made the decision to check out your you're on that doorstep kind of thing when you reach the point where we're at now that you can look back and reflect upon that journey that black dog becomes not necessarily a villain you know like and i wouldn't say a friend either but it's someone as you say that you can be grateful for because i i couldn't have written this story without my black dog no, and so exactly. i'm grateful i'm so yeah. grateful for what i've for what my journey has been because it's helping me be the rainbow for people now and I might not have been that otherwise so no, yay exactly <laughs> and, that, and that's brilliant and that's that's we need more people like you to to be able to to <laughs> embrace and things like that and it, it is I mean it's I've got a, a mutual respect with my black dog because it's one yep. of these things I know I'm going to be living with for the rest of my life and I yep. know I know my triggers I know that yep. i if the weather stays as poor it is as it is at the moment, <laughs> then I, 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 I have, yeah, it is a challenge, 100%, but I know my tools that I have to, to help yeah. it. And, it's, and that, that was one of the things that was important to me with the book as well, was to, to not gloss over the fact that your journey will go up and down, but the fact that this will be with you forever, and it's just a matter of, learning to manage it as best you can and acknowledge that sometimes you'll be winning some days are really going to suck but, <laughs> but, that, <laughs> but that's the just, truth that is the yeah, truth yeah exactly and but the the best thing you can do on those days get out of bed <laughs> and give the day a shot see exactly. what happens exactly exactly the list get out of bed yeah oh i have i have like um three kind of set up your day for not sucking too much kind of rules <laughs> one of those is obviously get out of bed um then it's to make your bed even if it's just you throw the covers back 
at least then when you go back to, to bed, it's like, okay, I'm not climbing into some horrid little nest. I deserve to have a nice bed. I deserve to be looked after. And and if I can make my bed, what else can I can achieve today? Um, my, but it's wife, also, my, my wife tells me that every morning. Just about. It's, it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I believe it now. I, I'll start making the bed. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be hospital corners. Just, you know. <laughs> Um, and the other two are, if you can, have a shower in the morning just to wash off yesterday and start fresh. Tricky with a toddler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is to get dressed, which sounds silly. And even if you're deciding, particularly with the weather, how it is at the moment, even if you're deciding that it's a, I'm staying in my jammies or I'm having a onesie day because it's horrible and I know I'm not going anywhere and no one's coming over, that's fine. But change into new jammies, change into a new onesie so that you're starting the day with the intention of having a jammies day and celebrate the jammies day. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, get dressed to put on a tutu and get out the door. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that is fantastic, and it, but it is true though. It is. It is one of these things that yeah, you you, you set yourself up in the morning, um, yeah. and it is. It's one of these things. If you wake up and you tell yourself you're gonna have a crap day, you will have a crap day. But yeah. if you tell yourself I'm gonna have a good day, who knows what could happen? It's just that it's that mindset, and it's yeah. and it's and it's reminding yourself of your your worth and your power. You're worth exactly. having clean clothes. You have the decision. You can choose that for yourself. It's not, the universe doesn't dictate that for you. So, yeah, it's reminding yourself those little things too. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So what other tools do you do you use? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> one of my favorites and one of my probably most glaringly obvious in my face ones <laughs> is well if we're going to go glaring in the face there's probably two there's my hair obviously that gives me my superpowers <laughs> no but it just makes me feel it makes that inner five-year-old part of myself celebrate the fact that i'm a grown-up and i can be who i want to be and this is who i choose to be so hooray for that um but one of the other ones that i find really helpful is having and even before having my daughter this is having to care and be responsible for something else and one of the big things for me is houseplants and <laughs> i love peace lilies because they are tough they're resilient they can get droopy and look horrendous but they bounce back <laughs> and so i look at my houseplants and they're often a really good reflection of what my mental state is like if i haven't noticed that i've started sliding because i can look at my plants and they'll be going water <laughs> water <laughs> and that, that's a reminder that i haven't been paying attention to them which probably means i haven't been paying attention to myself either yeah so yeah so that's a big one <laughs> it's true though i mean we do yeah. have to, to look out for number one it does sound selfish but if it, we have to put time into ourselves to, to make Absolutely. sure that we're, we're putting out to the the ones we love care about everyone's getting like work gets 100 percent, family gets 100 percent. if we're not doing that for ourselves then something's gonna break yep that's exactly right and it's that whole you can't give from an empty cup thing yeah. <laughs> it's so true and that doesn't mean that your your self-care needs to be massive or hugely time consuming it might just be you've taken a moment to choose your favorite socks for the day or you know, like it's just that caring about yourself even in tiny doses so it's getting up showering putting yeah just feel yeah, good about putting, it. yeah 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 that's right that's cool yeah <laughs> that's awesome so the book you where, where is it at now so we, we can purchase it we can we can buy yes. it yeah it's um I have a website under construction at the moment, oh, cool. so hopefully awesome. that's not too far away. But yeah. otherwise, it's always on Trade Me, so it's okay. always through there. Or I've got a Facebook page, Arwenace Designs. You can message me that way and find it. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just had, as you saw, that incredible post on the New Zealand made products, which just went mental, which was yes, absolutely that's amazing. That is brilliant. Yeah, that's one. Of, I was, I was uh, a friend of mine tagged me in that, and I was like, yeah. 
that's that's something that we need to to be sharing far and wide. Yeah, absolutely. And I um I'm halfway through writing all the addresses on the 500 packages for schools of all the books. That's so awesome. those will be heading out soon, which is really exciting. And I can't wait to take a photo of me sitting in this ginormous pile of books. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. That'll be my global domination moment. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what sort of school, what, what schools is it? Primary? It's, no, school? I've gone for as big of a range as I possibly okay. could. So the, I've gone for a lot of people have nominated schools, which is awesome. Because I think that gives, like, obviously I know my part of the world, but I don't know the whole country. And so the reason I got people to nominate was because there are things happening around the country that I have no idea about that other people do. And so if I can send it where they're saying, hey, this is needed, then awesome. So it was aiming for, like, I think I've got sort of all the way from, like, Kaitaia, Kiri Kiri, down to Bulls and Bluff, like and everywhere in between. It, oh, it's it, brilliant. Yeah, it's really exciting, and I can't wait to see um, what comes of it. And and even just knowing, just knowing that it's going out there, and that even if just one person reads it and gets something out of it, that's awesome. You know, a hundred percent know that it will. It's, yeah. Just listening, watching that YouTube clip and hearing your passion behind and everything like that, the amount of love and everything that's gone into it is going to be something that's, um, yeah, for, for years to come, I think. And you drew, you did all the, the drawings and everything yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, that was part of um, being as budget as I possibly could. <laughs> because, again, like this, and I think it's easy to forget, but I'm not... I haven't won lotto. I'm I'm a stay at home mum with my little girl and my husband works and we've made that sacrifice to give my little girl the best start, but we don't have money falling out of our ears, you know. So so everything I've done with this has either been fundraised or I've done it myself. And I'm lucky to have some incredible cheerleaders in my world and, and behind me and really believe what I'm doing. But yeah, as you say, the illustrations I um I had someone lined up to do it and then they unfortunately had to pull the pin and I just went oh my god <laughs> and I think that was the moment that could have been it could have been a make or break moment but I was so determined and <laughs> I'm fortunately very stubborn which comes in handy <laughs> at times <laughs> so I decided because I wanted this to I wanted this to get out as soon as I possibly could as well. I didn't want it to be a five year project. Yeah. So I think I managed to get all the drawings done in, I think it was just over a month, but it was an insane month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I couldn't, have, I couldn't have done that without the support of my husband and, and him taking our little girl out. So I could sit there with half a dozen drawings on the go and sort of <laughs> be frantically going between them all. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> and, and for me, that was a real, um, that really woke up my black dog too, because of course I start telling myself, you can't draw your stuff's rubbish. This is going to look ludicrous. All those things come up and it's every drawing is a defiant act against the black dog and as a no you're wrong see <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that in itself was a heck of a process <laughs> oh it would have been it would have been and uh, i guess i mean we're talking about it being a children's book and things like that I, I, it's it's so much more than that so it's yep, so absolutely well so far it's the range is from nine to 64 oh, and wow. it's been beneficial to yeah <laughs> And there's been um, a friend of my father-in-law's who's, he must be late 50s or mid 50s, I'm not even sure. He tried to read the book and got halfway through and had to stop because he was in tears and was just like, it's too much. I need to read this with my daughter kind of thing. It was just, so it, it is having a pretty powerful impact on, as you're saying, not just kids, but growing up kids as well oh exactly exactly like i said you, you articulate it so well that when people who haven't been through it or, or things like that it will actually 
allow them, give them a little bit of understanding of, of what it's like with that, that black dog sitting on yeah. every day type thing and, and having yeah. that anxiety and having that, that inner critic and, and things like that. Whereas, and that just that it's unrelenting, that it's not mm, just on a Tuesday at 10 to 11, it might have a bit of a go. It's no, yeah. it's 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at night, it's the worst. It's, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely, yep. Right. Yeah. No, no. It, was, it was definitely important to me to get that across. And, and as you said earlier, too, there was um, something you said about how, how it's something that everybody sort of has to some degree. And so there's one illustration in the book that I absolutely love where Rupert's looking around the schoolyard and he can see three other kids and they've got black dogs of various different sizes. One's sitting on the shoulder, I think one's in a backpack and the other one is completely draped across someone's legs. And it's like, as you say, it's that normalizing, it's that whole, I'm not a freak, this is actually, this is everywhere, this isn't just yeah. me. Yeah, and I guess that's the, we don't know who else is suffering as well. Yeah. So it's always, if you can be one thing in life, be kind. Yes, um, yeah, it's exactly. One of these things, you just, you just don't know what that person standing next to you who's crossing the road is going through. You just Absolutely need, right. And, and, or maybe that checkout operator that's not being as friendly as you might have hoped or the, anyone that's maybe a bit grumpy or having a bit of a bad patch. As you say, you don't know what's in their head at that point in time. You don't know what they're facing when they go home. You don't know anything about them. So if you can just with a tiny little bit of yourself brighten up their day or give them a laugh about something, then absolutely do it because you just you just don't know how yeah, powerful exactly. that one little thing might be. Exactly. A smile goes a long way. Huge. Absolutely. Just that that um I think a lot of the time it's that we feel invisible and like no one actually notices, no one cares. So if you take a moment just to acknowledge someone, even just walking past and give them a smile, they might have been thinking about checking out on their way home and maybe that smile makes them go, okay, maybe I'll see what tomorrow's got. Mm, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Just yeah. maybe, it's worth a shot. <laughs> exactly, 100% totally agree. Yeah. Anyway, it's probably, I'm just about to be cut off, I think. Yeah, I think we've been blabbering a while. <laughs> so is there anything, anything else you'd like to add? I mean, I'll, I'll, for everyone who's watching, I can, um, can put in the, the website and, and things like that. And, yeah, uh, cool. And trade me I things. Think, and... I think just the biggest message is just be excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted said a whole lot of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself the way you'd like to be treated and, and don't be afraid of sharing that light that shines within you. Exactly. Shine it out there, super bright, exactly. be blinding, go for it. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Dye yeah. rainbows in your hair, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough, this is all sort of, yeah. That, that's it's... poppycock, you can have some sweet <laughs> rainbow action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time we chat there, I'll just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you so much. It's been an absolute privilege, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people within the mates um, group that'll be reaching out to to find out awesome. where to get the book from and and things like that. So go well, take care. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me. This has been yeah, awesome. Absolute privilege. <laughs>